nuclear stability. I know we haven't talked about the nucleus too much, even though we've been talking about nuclear chem. However, what happens is the protons, I don't know if you thought of this, but the protons are all plus charges. Why the heck are they cool being together in a nucleus? And the, what helps stabilize the nucleus is the neutrons. And what happens is when you're a smaller nucleus, you just need about the equal number of protons and neutrons to help balance out that nucleus. As the nucleus gets bigger and bigger, in order to stabilize that nucleus, you need a lot more neutrons than you do protons to stabilize that charge of imbalance. Uh, and this is shown graphically, graphically uh, with something called the zone or island of stability. It looks something like this. Uh, let me zoom out so you can see the whole picture here. And you can see this in your text if you want. Here we have on the x-axis the number of protons, Z. That's your atomic number. Versus the, just the number of neutrons. So your mass number minus your atomic number. Atomic number of neutrons. When you have a small nucleus going from about 0 to 20. So what's 20? OK, calcium. Cool. <laughs> calcium, yes. So you're following the line y equals x. As you get away from, you know, above about 20, then you see this curve uh, separate from the y equals x line and go above it. When it starts, uh, so it needs those more of those neutrons to stabilize. If it lies here, that uh, is said to be in the belt of stability or the island of stability, the zone of stability, all those sort of uh, synonyms. If it is, if the nucleus is not on this belt. Uh, or zone, then it gets extremely unstable. Okay? Uh, so, if it is too unstable, if it's way up, let me put way up here. You might want to draw that. Maybe I'll redraw this like this. If, so it follows this. If you graph this, If it is not on this line, but it's, and you graph the number of protons and neutrons that's up here, you're going to find a lot of alpha emission. So big particles that are not in the belt of stability will undergo alpha emission. So if you see a big thing, it's probably giving off alpha radiation. Okay, if you're over here uh, in this section, you're giving off uh, some beta emissions. So they're smaller particles, not quite as big. Uh, so because they're not quite as big, the electron's not as big as the alpha particle or helium, so it's giving off smaller particles. If you're over here somewhere, on the right-hand side of the curve, then you're doing positron emission of, of 1m. Emission uh, or uh, electron capture. So the ones over here tend to, doesn't mean that they all have to if they're in that area, but you tend to get beta emission and electron capture on the right hand side of the curve. So whenever you're off the curve, you have some sort of radiation being given off. Okay? Now what we're going to do is for any given nuclei that I give you, you'll have to determine if it's stable or not. And again, that's due to the number of protons and neutrons. This is going to be a little difficult because most of the things that I will tell you are rules of thumb, meaning they're not always true. So you're doing your best to estimate if something is stable or not, or given a list, which one you think is the most likely to be stable. Multiple could be somewhat stable. What's the most likely to be stable? So let me give you the rules of thumb, general guidelines, what I'll call it, for determining stability. And you'll see a couple examples in your text of this and definitely on the practice exams. Okay, here's the first one. If Z, the atomic number, is greater than 83, it is radioactive. 
Okay? And I'm going to put a red star by this, meaning you can take that one to the bank. That one's pretty much always true. Okay? So if the atomic number, if it's polonium or larger, it's going to be unstable or radioactive. Okay, here's the next one. Uh, if it fits the uh, AZ average on a periodic table, on the periodic table, uh, then uh, it's stable. Uh, let me tell you what I mean by that and then say a little bit more about it. So, for example, if you have your periodic table handy, take a look at sulfur. Sulfur, let's say you didn't know anything else about sulfur, its mass num its atomic number is 16, its mass number is 32. So you would expect sulfur 32 to be a stable element. Does that make sense? Because it fits what it says on the periodic table of the averages. Okay, this one is not always true because sometimes, I think the good one's chlorine. Uh, oh, maybe not chlorine. Chlorine, oh, I'll show you what, it's 35.45. So you wonder, oh, is it chlorine 35 or 36 that's the stable one because it's kind of in the middle. And there are several ones that do this. Chlorine, I think, is actually 35 and 37 are stable. And it averages out to 35.45. So sometimes this does not work. But usually this does work. Okay? So more often than not, this is a pretty good rule. If it fits the periodic table, it's probably true. The converse of this is not true. So if it does not fit the periodic table, that does not say anything about stability. Because there are a lot of isotopes that are stable but don't fit what it says on the periodic table as the average. Okay? Converse, not true. The, what it states here, usually true. Got that? Okay. Uh, Let's go to the next one. Next general guideline. So no red star by this one because you can't take that one to the bank. Okay, if protons equal neutrons, when Z is less than or equal to 10, it's stable. Okay, first let me explain that. Take a look at oxygen, okay? Oxygen, uh, 16 is stable because there's eight protons and eight neutrons. Night, uh, let's do another one. Uh, carbon 6 is stable because there's six protons and six neutrons. Uh, nitrogen set, uh, oh, I should say carbon 12 is stable. Nitrogen 14 is stable because there's seven protons, seven neutrons. So when protons equal neutrons and you're less than equal to 10, which is neon or smaller, you're going to be stable. This one, you can take to the bank. That one's good. That works. 